Okay, so this is the third part of the parathyroid slash thyroid lecture series. This is the lecture on the parathyroid. So just a quick anatomy review. There are normally four parathyroid glands which are located posterior to the thyroid. The step one trivia is that the superior two are from the fourth branchial pouch and the inferior two are from the third branchial pouch. And the way to remember that is that it makes no sense. The inferior two are more likely to be ectopic. So those are the ones that are more likely to in, end up in the chest, and that does make sense since they're closer to the chest. So first case here, we've got three CT images, pre- early arterial and delayed. Now, this is a good point for me to point out something that I mentioned earlier, which is notice that the thyroid gland is dense even on a non-contrasted study, and that's because it has iodine in it. Now it becomes more dense with contrast because it is very vascular, and it will take that contrast up. So we've got, let's take a zoom in, we have an enhancing nodule posterior to the thyroid which demonstrates early enhancement and washout on delay. So this is a CT way to diagnose a parathyroid adenoma, which is by far the most common cause of hyperparathyroidism, like 80-90% of the, of the cases. On ultrasound, these things are just going to look like a nodule, hypoechoic, posterior to the thyroid. So let's review some parathyroid nukes. So here's the parathyroid gland. So what causes hyperparathyroidism? So we already mentioned the most common cause which is a hyperfunctional adenoma. But there are two other causes that are worth knowing. Multi-gland hyperplasia and cancer. And these are in decreasing order. So there's two ways to image the parathyroid gland. You can use a dual phase technique with a single tracer, which is technetium cestamibi, or you can use a dual tracer technique where you use a combination of tracers. Let's talk about the dual phase technique first. In the dual phase technique, a single tracer, TEC-99 cestamibi, is administered both in an early phase, which is around 10 minutes, and then a delayed phase in three hours. The idea is that Sestamibi likes things that have a lot, lot of blood flow and a lot of mitochondria. Parathyroid pathologies tend to have both. So what you end up seeing is something that enhances more avidly early and then sticks around longer after the tracer has washed out of the normal tissue. There you go, sticking around. So here's an example. So initial uptake is seen in both the thyroid and parathyroid gland. And then on the delayed phase, you're going to have uptake within hyperplasia or adenomas. So just as a review, Sestamibi parathyroid imaging depends on what two factors? mitochondrial density, and blood flow. So what kind of things can cause false positives? So there are a few. Thyroid nodules, head and neck cancers. Cancers tend to have increased blood flow and increased mitochondria. Lymph nodes, especially abnormal lymph nodes like metastatic lymph nodes, and brown fat, which is has a lot of mitochondria. So now let's talk about the dual tracer technique. 
So the, in the dual tracer technique, two different agents are used and then a subtraction is done. The first agent is chosen because it goes to both thyroid and parathyroid. And your options are Cestamibi or Thallium. The second agent is chosen because it, it only goes to the thyroid. So your options are iodine or protectinate. And then you subtract. And what you're left with is anything taut, which you know, could be a parathyroid adenoma. So here's an example. We do our subtraction, and there you go. Get an ultrasound, and it's going to correlate with this looks like a nodule posterior to the thyroid. So this dual tracer technique has problems. And motion is one thing, so if, if they move between the two uh, exams, when the subtraction's done, it's going to be artifactual. Anything that messes with the iodine, stuff that we mentioned before, like medications, amiodarone, uh, blocking agents, CT contrast, etc. Now let's talk about another situation that is a really good gamesmanship. So, Sestamibi, like I said, anything that has increased blood flow and increased mitochondrial density is going to take it up. So MIBI is also used for breast-specific gamma imaging because breast cancers tend to have more blood flow and more mitochondrial density. So anytime you're doing a MIBI scan and you see lymph nodes, like if they would happen to show you lymph nodes when they were looking at a, the parathyroid, or if they were doing uh, breast-specific gamma imaging and you see lymph nodes, or if they were doing a heart with MIBI and they showed them to you, that's cancer until proven otherwise. you got to call it cancer. Cancer, cancer, cancer. That's a really common sneaky trick, and it's also keep you out of hot water in real life. So that's it. That's the end of the parathyroid lecture. It's a short one. And the next lecture series is on MSK.